This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 27 of season 2 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, July 3rd, 1909. I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford 114 years ago. The first section in... Uh, The July 3rd issue was the center section, Westford Center. Captain Sherman H. Fletcher Fletcher has received a letter promising a monument to Civil War veterans for the town from Colonel Edwin D. Metcalf of Auburn, New York. He is son of William Metcalf, formerly of this town, who served in the Civil War in Company C, 16th Massachusetts Regiment, as first lieutenant, the only commissioned officer from this town. The proposed monument is a fine and striking figure of a soldier. We'll hear a lot more about that in the coming weeks. Dr. and Mrs. Edward C. Atwood and Miss Evelyn Atwood of Daytona, Florida, are spending part of their summertime in town. Edward is is a brother of the three Atwood sisters who lived at 4 Graniteville Road, and Miss Evelyn is his daughter. Our last week's list of homecoming school teachers is swelled by the names of Archie Hartford and Miss Edith Bicknell. These were teachers who are from, from Westford but were teaching in some other town. Miss Natalie Sleeper was in town recently at Miss Miranda Luce's, uh, which was 25 Main Street uh, in a house built by her father, Reverend Leonard Luce, who came to Westford in 1828 as the first pastor of the new uh, con- uh, Union Congregational Church. Natalie Sleeper is the daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Walter Sleeper of Westford, who died here in uh, 1908 and 1907, respectively. Mrs. Leonard W. Wheeler is very ill with pneumonia. The 4th of July committee have put out posters announcing a parade at 8 a.m. through the village streets to the ball grounds at Westford Depot, where a band concert will be given. There will be a band concert on the Common in the afternoon by the Nashua Military Band, competitive, competitive sports on the Common, and a ladies baseball game. The parade is expected to include many floats, two baseball teams, foresters of Graniteville, fire departments of the center and Graniteville, and the Nashua Military Band. Joel Wall, auctioneer, will sell all the grass on the Dane Farm in the north part of Westford on Saturday, July 10th at 2 p.m. This is typical of the times. Uh, Farmers would often sell the the grass on their fields if they didn't eat it themselves. It would be cut for hay to feed the farm animals. The next section is entitled Academy Graduation. A large audience listened Friday, June 25th, at the town hall to the graduating exercises of the academy. The class date, 1909, in gilt, and the class colors, turquoise blue and gold, were in front of the platform, backed by beautiful display of mountain laurel, evergreen, potted plants, and abundance of cut flowers, all making beautiful decorations. Singing of wedding chorus by the school opened the exercises. Prayer was then offered by Reverend Charles P. Marshall. Miss Lily Moran gave an essay on Heroes of Peace. Carl Wright spoke on forestry. Uh, these are students, and, and uh, seniors were uh, often required, at least in some of the courses, were required to write an essay uh, for graduation. Miss Althea Smith's class prophecy was read by Miss Gertrude Hamlin because of the death of Miss Smith's grandmother. The valedictory was given by Alistair McDougall, who intends to go to the Massachusetts Agricultural College in the fall. Miss Gertrude Hamlin presided at the piano for several selections sung by the school under the direction of Edwin N.C. Barnes, supervisor of music. 
All the essays gave clear expression to the thoughts embodied therein and reflected full credit to teachers and graduates. Reverend John E. Blake of Fall River, in his address to the pupils on, quote, the making of a man, end quote, had an especially appropriate subject and improved his opportunity for the convening for the conveying of helpful thoughts and inspiring high ideals to his best ability. This subject fitted in excellently with the class motto, he conquers who conquers himself. A Latin proverb, Vincent qui se Vincent. That, that was, that's what the motto is in Latin. This thought was seized upon by Reverend Benjamin H. Bailey in his remarks as he presented the diplomas. W.A. Woodward, Miss Edith Babbitt, and Miss Gertrude Bartlett have been the teachers at the academy during the year. The annual reception and dance of the Academy Alumni Association was held in the evening. The next section is called Wedding. Edwin N.C. Barnes, supervisor of music in Westford Schools, and Miss Mabel Crocker, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Oscar Crocker of Braintree, were united in marriage by Reverend Mr. Durkee of Roxbury at the home of the bride's parents, Monday, June 28th at 9.45 a.m. The bride was given away by her father in the Episcopal ring service. She was attended by her sister Margaret as bridesmaid and Miss Marjorie Seavey of Westford as flower girl. They were married in their traveling suits and departed immediately for a two weeks sojourn in New Brunswick, whence they go to Europe for the summer. A wedding breakfast was served after the ceremony. The next section is entitled Congregational, referring to the church. Children's Sunday was observed at the Union Congregational Church, June 27th. In spite of hot weather, there was a good attendance. To those who know their work, there is little use in adding comment on the decorations in charge of Miss May Atwood, Miss Helen Burnham, and the Loyalty Club. Two children were baptized, Norman Edward Day and Ruth Elizabeth Pollock. Some of you um, will remember the Norman E. Day Electric Company, I believe. He was an electrician in town. Next section is the About Town section. Seventeen members of the WCTU, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, accepted the invitation of Mr. and Mrs. Drew of Littleton last week Thursday to the hospitality of their cottages and boats and other remembrances and conveniences at Mill Pond. Mrs. Frank C. Hildreth, president of the union, was Toastmaster of the day. The dinner of their own creation, while excellent, did not incapacitate to the extent of, quote, too full for utterance, end quote, and everyone responded with music, vocal or fiddle, reading or general remarks. It was a day of good things with plenty of water as an appropriate seasoning. The phrase uh, quoted here, too full for utterance, was used by Abraham Lincoln on, April, on February 14, 1861, after dining at Parks House in Cadiz Junction, Ohio, while taking the train across Pennsylvania and Ohio, he spoke to a crowd from the platform of a railroad car and told them he was, quote, too full for utterance, end quote. It was later incorporated into a poem by the abolitionist Quaker poet James Sloan Gibbons, we are coming, Father Abraham, written in 1862, shortly after President Lincoln's call for 300,000 volunteers. John Adams has been attending the commencement exercises at Amherst College, where the degree of Master of Arts was conferred upon him. He is the first one of his classmates to receive this degree from his alma mater. The ball game last Saturday between Westford and Knights of Columbus of Andover was won by the Westford team 9-5. to five. Things, things are gradually kind of coming back to old-time ways, as in last year's plays. The alumni dance of Westford Academy last week, Friday evening, was up to expectations in music, weather, decorations, and foot movements. If you think the attendance not large, remember there are many people who are busy hoeing, haying, harvesting, and planting, and cannot spend those hands and feet over any additional movements. That's what happens when you live in a rural farming community like Westford was 100 years ago. 
the Glidden Bloon, that's G-L-I-D-D-E-N, from Fitchburg for Boston last Saturday, passed over the town and near enough to discern its occupants. Occupants. The Glidden Balloon was a gas-filled spherical balloon designed and owned by Lowell native Charles Jasper Glidden, born 1857, died 1927, of Boston and flown around the U.S., England, and France in 1908 and 1909. Mr. Glidden made several balloons, but the one named Boston seems to have been used here in Massachusetts. It carried two or three persons, or aeronauts as they were called. A gas mixture was used, but the main gas seems to have been hydrogen. In September 1909, the Boston would ascend from the gas works in Lowell and land at the, Gra- at the Graniteville baseball fields, carrying Mr. Glidden and Mayor Brown of Lowell. Uh, going on to the newspaper, the Honorable James Wilson Grimes of Reading has announced himself as a candidate for the Massachusetts Senate for the, first, for the fourth term from this district, whose western boundary is Ayer and eastern boundary the Atlantic Ocean at Saugus. The district is so long and narrow from east to west, there is not enough left to make much northern and southern out of it. Westford was well represented at the centennial celebration at Tingsboro, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. James Burroughs, who gave the historical address, was remembered by some as being identified with the Stony Brook School, Lyceum, and Debating Society a half century ago in the days of the Little Red Schoolhouse. He was the same eloquent Burroughs in voice, gesture, and personality. And, of course, Sam Taylor uh, also went to school at the Stony Brook Schoolhouse. The realm of the finely intellectual is clouded and crippled by the illness of Mrs. Leonard W. Wheeler. Uh, we read just above that she has pneumonia. John H. Decatur, who has been ill several years, has recently relapsed to his former incapacitated condition. Deacon Andrew Wright is not on the road to Wellville as speedily as expected as expert skill planned for. The next section or next paragraph is called Celebration. The town celebration Monday, July 5th, with its parade in all kinds of shade, including lemonade, will start from the common at just 8, unless, as usual, everybody is late. It will continue to march about until there are symptoms of being tired out. Then between Shirley and Westford, the ball game to maintain their old time name to be held on the field at Westford Depot of old time scenes not soon forgot. This is to be followed with game by the ladies on the common, which will have the refreshing air of the uncommon. All this with music of the Nashua military band. Just come and see who is able to land. For further particulars of the sports of the day, just come early and come to stay. During the parade, firecrackers forbidden by boys, seek less noisy toys. This is another one of Sam Taylor's uh, poems. It's written as prose, but it certainly uh, is meant to rhyme. The next section is the Graniteville section. Children's Sunday was fittingly observed here in the Methodist Episcopal Church on Sunday, commencing at 7 o'clock. The children had been rehearsing for several days previous to the exercises under the careful direction of Mrs. Armand, uh, who was the pastor's wife, and all did finely in their respective parts. The concert was largely attended and thoroughly enjoyed by all. Miss Lily Moran, accompanied by Mr. and Mrs. John Downing, left here Monday morning for Vernon, New Hampshire, where Miss Moran will spend a part of her summer vacation as the guest of Mr. and Mrs. Downing. Mrs. C.E. Stebbins and little son Charles of South Deerfield have been recent guests of Mr. and Mrs. Wesley O. Hawks in this village. Uh, Next is a sad story entitled Drowning Accident. Little Harry Stevenson, the four-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Fred Stevenson of Bellows Falls, Vermont, who were visiting at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Charles W. Robinson for a few days, was drowned in the cesspool back of the Robinson residence at about 11 o'clock Sunday forenoon. 
Harry, who was a bright little fellow, was playing with his older brother Harold and little cousin Freddie Robinson about the yard, and the older boys, having gone down down the street to meet the milkman, little Harry was left alone for a time. His mother, coming out of the house a few minutes after, failed to find the little fellow, and an alarm was sounded, and a search begun at once. Mr. Robinson, then walking behind the house, noticed the cover of the cesspool, cesspool off, looked down, and saw the child at the bottom. He was quickly pulled out by Mr. Robinson, assisted by William Wall. Every effort was made to bring him to, and Dr. Warren H. Sherman, who was summoned, did all in his power, but to no avail, as the cesspool was over five feet deep, and it was thought that the boy had been in there over 20 minutes. The affair caused great excitement here, and much sympathy was expressed for the bereaved father and mother. Undertaker David L. Grieg was sent for, and also medical examiner Coles of Ayer. Dr. Coles was out of town, and no one appeared to be able to give the name of his assistant. Finally, it was learned that Dr. H.B. Priest was the assistant, and he was notified and arrived here about 6 p.m. The death certificate was signed, death due to accidental drowning. The body was taken to Bellows Falls on the 1220 train Monday under the direction of undertaker David L. Grieg. The child's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Fred Stevenson, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson and family, and Mrs. Susan Wheeler accompanied the remains to Bellows Falls. The children of the Methodist Episcopal Sunday School sent a beautiful bouquet of flowers Sunday evening. The funeral took place in Bellows Falls on Tuesday afternoon and was very largely attended. The sad drowning accident caused a deep gloom on the people in this village, and it was truly the most sorrowful affair that has taken place here for a long time. The sympathy of the entire community is extended to the bereaved family in their sad affliction. The next section is the Forge Village section. The ladies of the sewing circle enjoyed an outing last week, Wednesday, at Sterling Junction, where they were the guests of Mrs. Weatherby at her pleasant cottage. They were very pleasantly entertained, and time passed only too quickly. Dinner was served at 1 o'clock. Then the time was spent in walking through the grounds where the annual camp meetings are held and socially. At 4 o'clock, they started for home by electric cars, passing by many spots of mountain laurel, which was its, at its greatest beauty. They arrived home about 6.30 p.m. The next day, the ladies were the recipients of large bouquets of the laurel through the kindness of Mrs. Fernald of Groton. William Merrill, the well-known optician of Lowell with his, fam with his family, are taking a vacation in one of the cottages. Mrs. August, August Myers and little son of Boston are at her father's for a few days, Joseph Bennett. Miss Violet Collins, a trained nurse in the Channing Hospital, Providence, Rhode Island, was visiting her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Miles Collins, when she was suddenly recalled to the hospital. She has entire charge of the operating room. The Forge Village Lions played the Brooksides on the home grounds Saturday afternoon, but owing to a difference of opinion, the game was not finished. Little Dorothy Farrell celebrated her fifth birthday at the home of her grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. William Wilson, Saturday afternoon, entertaining her young friends. She received many pretty presents, and after refreshments of ice cream, cake, lemonade, and candy, the little people returned to their homes, wishing all sorts of good wishes for their little hostess. Letters have re have been received from Mrs. Drake, who is visiting relatives in the West of the enjoyable time she is having and the many places of interest she has visited. That's the news in Westford for the week ending July 3rd, 1909. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will enjoy us, or will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.